Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Christopher Clark, town manager. It's my uh, honor and privilege to call the first uh, town council meeting of Monday, July 9th, 7 p.m., the reorganizational meeting, the 39th seating of the town council. And my first order of business is to turn it over to the senior counselor, uh, Mr. Vandal. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Let's uh, pledge, pledge of allegiance to our flag. Swearing in of counselors elect by our town clerk, Maddie Dulce. Maddie. Thank you. If I could have uh, Ms. Clemens, Mr. Moriarty, Ms. Palafun to come up. I swear you in. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. Reverend Peter Joyce, pastor of Blessed John Paul II Parish, will perform the invocation. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be here. Let me express my gratitude as a citizen of this wonderful community. My thanks to each of you for your generosity and your service. Those of you who have done that in the past and those who are new, we're grateful that you are willing to make this sacrifice and the uh, for the sake of our community and for its betterment. And I'm privileged to be able to ask God's blessing upon your work and upon our community. Let us pray. Lord our God, we live in times of great change all around our world. There are moments and places of uncertainty and tension, the concern of violence, and yet we also see so many people struggling and yearning for the gift that we celebrate tonight, the gift of democracy, and the ability to choose our leaders and to choose the future of our community. 
We give you thanks for all those who placed their name in nomination and who ran in this recent election, who are willing to make this claim for our community, and for those who took up the challenge to participate in this process by their making the effort to vote and to make choices that will direct the future of our community. Those choices are made. We ask now, God, that you send forth the power of your spirit and your grace upon this council and our elected leaders. Help us as a community to come together as they come together to be this council. May they know the gift of your love and the power of your grace and the wisdom that comes from you to discern, to discuss, to decide what is the best for our community and to move us forward in these important times and through moments that are uncertainty. We've seen our landscape change radically and difficultly over the past year and a half. We ask that as the political landscape changes yet again because of the democratic process, that we would have confidence in our leaders, that they would have confidence in their own selves and in each other. Fill them with your grace and touch our community by the power of your love. There's a wonderful spiritual song called The Sparrow that speaks that God's eye is on the sparrow and I know that he watches over me. Lord God, watch over this community, the eye of the Commonwealth. May your eye be upon this council and upon each of the members of this wonderful and gifted community that by your spirit we might come together that, with, that we might show forth your beauty and your grace and your goodness in this year to build a better community and with that, a better world. We trust in your promise as we ask your blessing through Christ our Lord, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for the privilege. Thank, thank you, Father Peter. We will now have roll call of the town councilors. <coughs> Councilor Clemens? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Micucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Moriarty? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Peliquin? Present. Councilor Regis? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Nine present? Thank you. May I have a motion for the chair? Councilor Langevin? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, bring forward the name of Councilor Nicola as chairman. Second. Discussion? I, I just wanted to note that uh, my own vote tonight is, is purely predicated on, on the things that uh, residents and citizens had uh, expressed to me over the last few months uh, and, and in the last two weeks, uh, and is in no means a personal political sort of statement. Do I have any other nominations? Roll call, please. Council Langevin. Council Nicola. Council Marcucci. Councilor Nicola. Council McDonald. Present. Council Moriarty. Abstain. Council Nicola. Council Nicola. Council Pelliquin. Present. Council Regis. Councilor Nicola. Councilor Vandal. Council Nicola. Councilor Clements? Councilor Nicola. Six for Councilor Nicola, two present, one abstain. We have, an, we have a chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item number eight, election of vice chair. Council Langevin. I'd like to bring the name of Council Clements forward as vice chair. Second. Any discussion? Can we have a roll call, please? Council Micucci. Councilor Clements. Council McDonald. Councilor Clements. Council Moriarty. Councilor Clements. Council Nicola. Councilor Clements. Councilor Peliquin. Councilor Clements. Councilor Regis. Councilor Clements. Councilor Vandal. Councilor Clements. Councilor Clements. 
Yes. Councillor Langevin. <laughs> Nine for Clemens. Vice Chair, Councillor Clemens. Thank you. Okay. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Just one thing. I didn't. I didn't vote. Oh. But it would have been Councillor Clemens. It would have been. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Just for the record. In one late trade. Langevin. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's a unanimous vote. Okay, agenda item number nine is the adoption of the permanent seating arrangement, and town clerk Maddie Doust will do the honors, please. So if the remaining seven councillors would go over to the podium, she will help you through that process. Do I do that? You want me to do that? That's right. I'm going to come and help you, too. You get to sit right here. I don't want to Council Langevin has picked seat number three. Councilor Marcucci has picked seat number five. Five. Councilor McDonald has picked seat number 12. Thirteen. Council Pelican has picked seat number six. Agenda item number 10 is the adjournment of the reorganizational meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, can I have a show of hands on this? All in favor, it's unanimous, adjourned. We're going to move on. To the actual town council meeting. Agenda item number one, again, would be to Pledge allegiance. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Langevin? 
Present. Councillor Marcucci? Present. Councillor McDonald? Present. Councillor Moriarty? Present. Councillor Nicola? Present. Councillor Pelliquin? Present. Councillor Regis? Present. Councillor Vandal? Present. Nine present? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, June 18th, 2012. So moved. Second. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Abstain. Councilor Maicucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Abstain. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? Abstain. Councilor Regis? Abstain. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Five yes, four abstain. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number four, our subcommittee reports. And I don't think there are, oh yes, there is, I'm sorry. Okay, A would be general government and there was no subcommittee and no report. B is DPW, Councilor Vandal? No report and no meeting scheduled, thank Th you. Thank you. C, Education and Human Services, Councillor Clements. There was no meeting since the last one. However, we did ask, or I did ask to have the recording clerk elaborate on the minutes due to the abbreviated version. Uh, would you prefer that they be read then fully at this point? Is that okay with you? That's that fine if you'd like to do that. Okay. Um, I'll just spell at the beginning. I'll just go to the agenda items because that's where the discussion happened. Agenda item one was to discuss and vote to approve the change order number seven in the amount of $56,123, revised total as requested by Sibley Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School project. Town Manager Clark explained the building will be substantially completed by Monday and will be turned over officially to the town by August 7th. He explained they will be slightly under the town's portion of the budget and believes they will be very close to the town's allocation. Town Manager Clark stated a lot of contingencies have been used and explained how the process works. He added they will probably have change orders from now until October and stated it's not unusual for this type of project. Town Manager Clark discussed change order number seven, which includes MEP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and a large portion is for soffit ceiling and sprinkler modifications and building modifications. He stated in addition there were smaller items needed, such as motion detectors at light fixtures. Town Manager Clark stated overall they had a 5% contingency with this project and they reduced it down to a 3% contingency. Councilor Clement stated she's surprised with these modifications as they were they they are pretty detailed now on the availability and systems that put everything in place before one starts building and express disappointment with the request. Town Manager Clark described the process and advised there is a give and take on every and everything has been vetted through for a good long time, good length of time. A motion was made by Councilor Marcucci, seconded by Holly Christa with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the change order number seven in the amount of $56,123, revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn and Lester and Associates for the Middle High School project. It was a vote by show of hands, all were in favor. And then the, the agenda item number two, discuss and vote to approve the proposal for the Cops and Kids program to provide transportation to Streeter Point Recreation Area and Sturbridge as an alternative swim site due to the closure of the state pool. I stated as the state pool is not ready, they are looking to continue this program that has been very well received over the last couple of years. It's very well run by the police department. Town Manager Clark stated on the formal agenda for the council meeting, <coughs> they're going to have two components to the same motion. He explained this is a spending program and in the past DCR has funded it because they have not had to pay for lifeguards and use the funding to help transport the kids to Streeter Point. Town Manager Clark stated the state pool is now under construction this year, so it will be done for next summer. Town Manager Clark stated the only change in the motion is to add the wording to accept a contract from the Commonwealth of Mass DCR in the amount of $11,020 for the purpose of doing the alternate site. Town Manager Clark stated Sergeant Jose Dingy does a great job for them and this is consistent with what they have done in the past two years. A motion to amend the agenda item was made by Michael Jane, seconded by Councilor Makuchi. Vote by show of hands, all in favor 4-0. Chairwoman Clements read the main motion, vote to approve the proposal for Cops and Kids program to provide transportation to Streeter Point Recreation Area in Sturbridge as an alternate site, swim site due to the closure of the state pool contingent upon the Commonwealth of Mass contractor DCR in an amount of $11,020. A motion was made by Councilor Marcucci, seconded by Mike Janes, with an all in favor 4-0. Just point out that the Cops and Kids program, this program did start today. They had over 100 children show up, and it was uh, very well done, and they got to go to the beach today, too. We saw them get off the bus this afternoon back at the community center, so kudos to all those involved that are uh, making this happen for the children of our community. Just 
Agenda item number three, discuss violation and penalty fees regarding the trash violations, review charter and bylaws regarding the issue of amending $250 penalty for rubbish violations. Chairwoman Clements spoke about the last meeting, stated recycling rates are up, but would like to discuss a change in the bylaw regarding the penalty fees. I explained 250 is a lot of money and we are a town with a lot of multifamily dwellings. I expressed concern for the penalizing the investors in the town. I added that tenants should be responsible for trash violations, not the property owner. A discussion was held that if a landlord is making their contain marking their containers and making sure the tenants are aware of the rules and the tenant still chooses to break the rules whereas the landlord receives a ticket, the hearing officers will be willing to remove the fine off the landowner and appropriately apply it to the tenant if the property owner is willing to specify that tenant. John Pulaski spoke about the landfill contract, asked if they had seen the dollar per ton increase charge as the recycling rates have increased. The town manager stated this operation question for the Board of Health and explained they would need to see what other communities' recycling rates are and compare it to our town. Councillor Clements stated she would be interested in a follow-up as there is a monetary gain to the town. Town Manager Clark explained it is not as simple an issue as it appears and the health director is working on it. Councillor Clements added the contract with the landfill operator should be upheld. Councillor Marcucci shared her personal feeling and looked at it in a positive perspective, asking why people wouldn't want to comply with the bylaw. She stated things look nice and are getting better. Councillor Marcucci asked about the number of citations issued and how many were single family and multifamily dwellings. Town Manager Clark stated he would look into it. Much discussion was held about the procedure of the trash. Enforcement, uh, procedure, excuse me, procedure of the trash enforcement and how a change in the penalty structure could affect the residents. Holly Christo stated she believes this level works and it gets people's attention and they should stick with what works. A discussion was held about changing the fee structure from D to F to A to C. Michael Janes made a motion to amend the second, the section 10-104 to change the wording, ske quote, schedule of penalties D through F shall be applicable to, quote, schedule of penalties A through C shall be applicable, seconded by Councilor Marcucci. Town Manager Clark asked if he wanted it as a bylaw amendment or just as a discussion. Chairwoman Clements stated it is a recommendation from subcommittee. After discussion about the process, Michael Janes rescinded his motion and Councilor Marcucci withdrew her second. The new motion was to have a discussion about the amendment of section 10-104 enforcement by amending it to read schedule of penalties D through F be changed to A through, A through C, which would change the fine structure from $250 to $300 from to, to, to $25 to $100. Town Manager Clark explained the next steps if the Council approves this concept. He stated he would recommend that this go to the Board of Health for a suggestion and the Council could take a secondary vote, say yes, go ahead with the three readings or the Board of Health could approve. It, as it was in their jurisdiction also. A motion was made by Michael Janes and seconded by Councilor Marcucci. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 3-1. Oh, excuse me, all in favor. It was a 3-1 vote. Uh, Holly Christo was opposed. Agenda item four, discuss and possibly vote to approve new, new middle high school items as a result of the school building committee meeting on 6-13 at 5 p.m. Chairwoman Clements recommended to remove this item as there were none. Town Manager Clark noted at the school building committee that they stated there would be a request for a meeting to be held in July. Um, other discussion was Roger Cowett expressed concern for properties with unregistered vehicles or junk vehicles and also buildings that are not up to code. I recommended that he contact the Inspections and Health Department for more assistance. Town Manager Clark stated the community walks will start Friday mornings again and stated if there were specific areas that they would like them to look at, they would be happy to do so. A motion to adjourn was made by Mike Jane, seconded by Councillor Marcucci. All in favor? We adjourned at 8.55 and this is respectfully submitted by Stacey Reno, the recording clerk. Thank you very much for doing that for You're the minutes. Welcome. Thank you. That is it. No meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you, Councillor. Planning and development. There was no meeting, no, no um, minutes. And protection of persons and property, Councillor Landrin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving along to agenda under item number five, Chairwoman's announcements. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate the newly elected councillors and re-elected councillor Clements. And I'd like to personally thank former councillor Larry Spinelli for his service on this council. He served us well. He was the chair of the general government subcommittee and was very active in the community behind the scenes on a lot of projects that the town pursued in the past couple of years. So I wanted to mention that. I also wanted to mention that after our last town council meeting, 
I did attend the June 28 Bylaw Review Committee meeting, at which time I presented to the Bylaw Review Committee our formal request as a council for them to review the bylaw that we've discussed um, so many times regarding the trash and the trash fines. And they will, they, they listened and they heard some other citizens, some of the uh, town councilor Clements was there as well, and they will review that bylaw and it will be part of their report when they're finished going through all the bylaws. So I wanted you to know that that's, that's going through. Um, the day that the town held its, its election on June 26th was a day that we laid to rest a very special citizen in this community. And for those of you who are not aware of the fact, the town has lost George Perrin. And I've seen in the newspaper and I've heard people in the community, former and present um, counselors and heads of department talk about George. And I, I just wanted to say for myself that anywhere you look in this community, you'll find George Parent's fingerprints. He was everywhere. And the thing that most people don't know is that he was everywhere. Um, more importantly, there will never be a more devo devoted husband to his wife and a more devoted father to his children. We've lost a great man and I feel that I've lost a tremendous friend. And I ask that we take one moment of silence in honor of the passing of George Perrin. Thank you. I'd now like to turn the microphone over to the town manager. Agenda item number six, town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wish to uh, also express my uh, congratulations to the three uh, new members of the council and the returning member, obviously, and wish to uh, just thank you to uh, Larry Spinelli. I enjoyed the, uh, the working relationship uh, with him and his time with the, with the council. Um, also, I attended George's uh, wake, and it really is a, a good person that was lost to this community. With that being said, um, I do have a little bit of business, and I know this is a short meeting, and I endeavor to keep it short. Uh, just a few things, just timely. Uh, Southbridge Police Department is operating the Cops and Kids Swim Program, and there is free public transportation to Streeter, Streeter Pond and Sturbridge. Uh, the bus schedule, the bus is available Monday through Friday starting today, uh, July 9th to August 16th, and it runs from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The pickup times are 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. The locations are Empire Buffet, Mary E. Wells Middle School, uh, Mechanic and Randolph, Village Drive, and the Community Center. And then the drop-off, the 2 p.m. Is, is a pickup and drop-off. The 4 p.m. is the final, the final drop-off. Uh, all children must be accompanied by an adult unless the child is a registered student with the Cops and Kids Swim Program. And if you're planning to use the service, please send an email prior or call the day of the service as space is limited. Services will not be provided on selected dates uh, such as July 19th, August 15th, and August 17th. And if there's any questions, uh, one can email copsandkids at southbridgemass.org. Uh, free lunch will be provided by Project Bread at the Community Center for All Children 18 and under at 11.30 a.m. It's nice that that program is again uh, able to be activated. We have for Monday at 9 a.m. a dedication of the rail trail. Uh, I wish to just express my appreciation to uh, Tom Daly and some of the DPW folks who constructed a bridge over the rail trail. Uh, really, you can't have a, a trail without a uh, bridge over rivers. 
So he has that work done, and we have tentatively, well, we have scheduled the rail trail ceremony for this Monday, July 16th at 9 a.m. The location is gonna be at Route 131 at the entrance to the trail across from the Golden Creek. Uh, if folks are interested, please contact Yvonne Tortoise, uh, my administrative assistant in the town manager's office, 508-764-5405, or you can email Yvonne at ytortoise at southbridgemass.org. We did have at the last meeting several uh, committee vacant, several committee reappointments. Uh, tonight we have additional ones, uh, but we do have several vacancies, and I thought this would be a nice opportunity to at least say where the vacancies are, and if you are interested, please contact my office. Be more than happy to see what we can do to uh, fit you with the vacancy. Uh, we have vacancies on the Agricultural Commission, on the Board of Health, Cable TV Advisory Board, Conservation, Council on Aging, Historic Commission, the Liquor Licensing Board has an alternate uh, position, the Planning Board has one position and two alternates, Public Weyers has one, Traffic Commission has one alternate, and the Zoning Board of Appeals has an alternate or associate. So if interested, please don't hesitate to contact the office love to talk to folks about being more active in their community and if it's a way that you wish to give back uh, certainly we wish to uh, encourage that as much as we can also I've received a uh, notice for the third annual Southbridge farmers market at the town common uh, it began on Friday July 6 it runs from 3 to 6 and every Friday thereafter throughout the summer uh, available is fresh local produce plants homemade artwork and if you are interested um, in participating in it, you can contact Karen at 774-452-4576. I'm sorry, <coughs> Just um, three remaining items. We have received information, and this will be coming up hopefully uh, this summer, uh, from Garifaldo is the design firm to replace the bridge or to do renovation work at the bridge at 131 over the Quinnebog River. So that is something that's coming up. I know that was a uh, council priority and I know they are progressing with design plans and before those design plans are complete, they will do a uh, public hearing here in the community. The last two items that I just wish to uh, ex extend my appreciation to the Worcester Business Journal. Uh, we did have a article in there at the end of June saying uh, untapped potential five central mass business properties that need developers and one of our properties that's for sale was highlighted in that article and I just wish to uh, thank the reporter Jacqueline Good for her assistance in enter level of interest in trying to help the town to market some of our properties. And then we do have a new business that has come to town and I, I've asked them if they would come in for the next meeting. I didn't think this meeting would be appropriate, uh, but the company's name is Fastenal. It's a uh, company that's located over at 484 Worcester Street and I will let them kind of do their thing about their welcome to the community and what they have to offer to the community. But I think it's a, uh, a new business in a new location. Uh, that has been newly renovated and I think that's a uh, exciting opportunity for the community to welcome a new business into the into its fold that's my uh, report this evening madam chair thank you thank you mr. Clark agenda item number seven is the swearing-in and pre presentation part of the agenda this evening we intend to swear in our new fire chief mark defronzo Mr. DeFranza.
I just want to say a couple quick words. As you know, it's a hot night here in the town hall. So I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity for this position. Um, the councillors who were here at the last council meeting uh, voted for me to do this job, and I appreciate that vote. I look forward to working with these councillors. Um, I hope to meet with each and every one of you to get your perceptions on the fire department and, and what you think we could do to improve and, and be better at what we do. So um, thank you. Congratulations, Chief. I'd like to um, also welcome State Representative Peter Durant to the podium. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I appreciate you giving me a couple of minutes this evening on, on short notice. First, let me say uh, congratulations to the new council members, uh, as well as Councilor Clements on her reelection, and uh, congratulations as well to Chief DeFranzo uh, on a well-deserved uh, appointment. I, I just want to take a couple of minutes to uh, let you know about a program that is taking place uh, here in the town of Southbridge that's been put out by the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development. The, uh, the department has some tornado relief funds that are available to residents uh, to help them with unreimbursed expenses. Uh, this, is, um, this is a program that has, uh, Myself and, and Councilor Clements were doing a little door-to-door -door work uh, last week on Charlton Street and Worcester Street, trying to spread the word. Uh, it's a program that has a very short time frame associated with it, uh, but essentially uh, funds are available through DHCD for use, again, as I said, on unreimbursed expenses, and it can be basically anything that the insurance company hasn't reimbursed you with. Uh, a lot of people are having problems with tree removal, pri private tree removal, things of that nature. And, uh, and so we want to make sure everybody is aware of this program. Uh, applications are available. Let me give you some information so that everybody at home can have it as well. Applications are available through the Pioneer Valley Planning Council, and that is um, the, the organization that is administering this. The gentleman over there you can talk to is Paul Briscotti. Uh, or Jim Mazik. The telephone number there is 413-781-6045. Uh, that's the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, you can also find, uh, I, I did post forms for this uh, on my website. You can find them at www.peterjdurant.com. You have to use the J, Peter J. Durant. Otherwise it goes to uh, some individual in England and he gets a little testy. Um, but uh, it's kind of weird, but uh, anyway, um, you can find them on, com. on dot com. Yep, on my website up in the upper right hand corner, you'll find a, a, a bright yellow link to that. Uh, you can always contact my office as well at 617-722-2060 or email me at peter.durant at mahouse.gov. Uh, there are some income eligibility requirements here, however, not all of the funds require uh, go to, uh, are scheduled to go to low income. There's, uh, as you'll see on some of the forms, um, it outlines the um, adjusted or the area median, median income. 60% of the funds are scheduled for people who make less than the area median income. Um, I think it is 25% for people who make uh, within that range, and 15% for those who are out of this range. So I've been urging everyone, if you have unreimbursed expenses, and everyone does, please get these forms, fill them out, and put them in. Uh, again, it's, it's short money. The, uh, the amount that you're limited to is $7,500. Uh, they can be for expenses that you have not incurred yet or expenses that you've already incurred. Um, but please apply for them. You won't know if you're going to get any money unless you apply, so don't let this pass you by. Uh, we're also trying to put additional funds in here uh, to try to keep this program going. But I, um, I did want, I think it was important to just make everybody aware because the deadline's coming up on the 25th very, very quickly. 
And, uh, and so I just wanted to make everybody aware of that so that they can apply. We should be able to, everybody here who, who needs funds should be able to at least put in for them. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Moving along to agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. Do we have any citizens wishing to come forward this evening? Please state your name and address. Good evening, Monique Mana, 20 Maple Street. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate the new councillors and also the re-election for Councillor Clemens. Welcome and thank you um, for um, giving to our community. Um, I'm here to let people know that the FOS group is hosting another community cleanup on August 4th, it's a Saturday, 9 a.m., we're meeting at the Mary E. Wells Junior High School parking lot, and the areas of cleanup will de be determined that day. Um, we'll have more information throughout the month of July. We're going to have it in the paper. We'll have it on cable access. Hopefully, I'll do an email blast. And we also have a Facebook group if you want to look us up on Facebook. Um, also, I'd like to make mention to Mr. Clark, you mentioned about the cops and kids and the, the bus schedule. Um, that bus schedule can also be found on copsandkids.com as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Manna. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Hello. I'm Susie Gears with the Southbridge Rec Committee. And I'm just let, letting everyone know that last night we kicked off our summer concert series. Um, we had a, a play, D.K. Moeller and the Devious Dentist, which was sponsored by Gateway Players, and we had one of the best opening nights, so very excited about our turnout and for the summer series. Um, I just want to thank our committee really quick, uh, Jackie and Lefty Varen, Joe Lasavio, and Gloria Barthelms. Um, it's a lot of work, as everybody up here knows. Um, this is a lot of work, and we're volunteers, and so... I'll take any sort of advice, suggestions, but please come down, and it's a, a free event every Sunday, 6 to 8. Um, I want to thank Rich Gaudet for sound, um, and I'd, again, I'd love to, to tell the uh, public to come down 6 to 8 on Sunday, because some people still get confused on the date. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, just real quick, I'm, I'm just going to run down the uh, bands that we have coming up. So this Sunday, July 15th, we have Optical Drive. I wonder who's in that band over here. Um, following is Boston Baked Blues, which they're Boston Music Award nominees. Uh, on the 29th of July is the John Penny Band. He was here last year, great country uh, artist. Boys of the Town on August 5th. Tall Heights, a uh, cello-infused duo from Boston. The 19th of August, the Red Satin Band, which is jazz, funk, pop, Latin. And on the 26th is an end of summer bash with Brian Kearsley. And on a little different uh, eclectic with some, a gospel night on September the 2nd. So if anybody has any suggestions for bands next year, would, uh, you know, I'll always accept them. Um, and I'd just like to thank our sponsors, Savers Bank, Mass Cultural Council, Southbridge Credit Union, Southbridge Savings Bank, the Lions Club here in Southbridge, Gateway Players, the Vienna, Big Bunny, Harrington Hospital, uh, Southbridge Hotel and Conference Center, Dexter Russell, and the House of Destiny Ministries. Um, we are going to have uh, chips and soda and all that good stuff. Um, the Commission on Disabilities is selling that, and all of the, pro uh, the proceeds go to the scholarship fund. So that is good times. Um, and so that is it on that. Just really quick to the citizens of Southbridge. A um, couple weeks ago, the Center of Hope was kind enough and donated a lot of money and effort to clean up uh, the Henry Street field and uh, the basketball courts. And I cannot thank them enough. They added swings, they repaired um, the skate park, um, just everything. And I cannot tell the citizens enough, please be courteous and pick up after yourselves. Pick up after your dogs. Um, this is our town, these are our parks, and I, I can't stand that we have let them go to pot. And uh, any children out there, it is okay to tell your mom and dad if you see something bad happen, because it is truly ours and we need to respect our community. So that's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Susie. 
And for what it's worth, Councillor Clements and I attended last night's opening, and it was wonderful. Congratulations, and thank you. Maureen Doyle, 771 Lebanon Hill Road. Oh, can you, can you hear? Oh, there you go. Can you people hear? Um, thank you for mentioning the farmer's market. That was one of the things I wanted to say. So um, just to reiterate, 3 to 6 p.m. Friday afternoon, Town Common. Um, the other thing is, I know you mentioned um, George, uh, my fellow conservation commissioner, and I don't know how this would work or if it's already a motion or what, but I was wondering if we could get a room named after him. There's meeting room one and meeting room three, I think, and I think it would be jazzier if it was the George Parent room, um, especially meeting room one because ConCom has met in there. I just think that would be. I, nice I've never tradition. heard anybody use jazzier and George Parent well. in the same <laughs> sentence, but that's a good point. <laughs> Thank you. That's a great point. We can look into that, can't we? And yes. you know, what? if he were alive, he wouldn't like that. <laughs> yes. That's a great idea, Maureen. But Thank you. I just think it would be a nice tribute to him. Thank He's you. He's done a lot for the town. And I agree. So. Thank you. Yep. There it is. Yeah, we talked about this. Too. Mm -hmm. Are there any other citizens wishing to come forward tonight? Okay. Moving right along, agenda item number nine. Vote to confirm the appointment of Dale Ferrin to the Liquor Board for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> the Liquor Board being a quasi-judicial board, I think it's important that candidates are screened very well. A lot of people don't understand that liquor licenses are given to a town by lottery. Many of them are um, basically property rights that somebody bought. They may pay five figures for a liquor license when they buy a building. It doesn't automatically uh, convey with the property. And when I say that they're given out by lottery, that means that the town's allotted so many. And if any of those certain licenses are lost, the town loses them. And those are businesses that are economic engines for the town to some degree. And so if we lose it, a full-scale liquor license, uh, there's a loss to the community. Uh, th this particular person has served on the board before, and my concerns are, in looking back at some of the minutes and some of the meetings that I was aware of, it seemed that there was a little bit aggressive in, in interest in particular liquor licenses. And I would just hope that, you know, I thought the previous person who served on this board did a fine job, I think, when it, in terms of weighing things out on facts. Just like Lady Justice has scales in a blindfold, not looking at the individual, their status, their, status, their class, or stand on things, they're looking at and weighing only the facts. Uh, and I'm not so sure, based upon previous um, actions on the, on the board, that this particular person is in that standing. So my concern is on that based upon past performance, and I'm going to have a very difficult time supporting this appointment tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any other discussion regarding this vote? I have a question. Councillor? Um, do these subcommittee um, recommendations typically, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the board recommendations, do they typically go through subcommittee meetings or, or are they generally presented straight to the council? I will, uh, I will answer that and if the manager wishes to add to it. These appointments are made by the manager mm -hmm. and sometimes they do come through a subcommittee but not always. Okay. This particular one has not gone through a subcommittee. Um, as I say, it is the manager's appointment. We, as, a, as the town council, will ratify his recommendation for appointment. Okay. Does that help? Yes. Okay. And just, just to elaborate, um, normally I would probably go where this is a new appointment, although he served on the board previously. I would generally go through subcommittee. We currently only have two people on the liquor board, and if there were a split vote, we do run into the issue of not having any action being taken. So I thought where this gentleman had previously served on the, on the liquor licensing board that it would make sense to put him in so we could have a functioning operation, operational board uh, going forward. 
So that's the reason for the timing. And we do have one alternate position that if there are people that are interested, we certainly have more room for another person to enter into the mix. That answers Anything else, question. Council? Oh. Thank you. Anybody? Councilor? Uh, through you to the manager, how many, if any, other individuals apply for the open position? There was no other people. This is a person that was on the board previously. Mm -hmm. I believe he served as an alternate for several years. So again, it was more operational necessity that drove this than anything else. Anything else? Okay. Anyone else wish to? Councilor McDonald. Was the person who held the position interested to continue? It's the manager's, uh, manager's discretion on the appointments. Uh, through the chair to the manager, I understand that, but my question was, did the person who was up on that position still have an interest in staying? He may have had an interest, but the manager didn't. Thank you. Anything further? No? Okay. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Maikuchi? Yes. Councilor McDonald? No. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Pelequin? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Council Vandal? No. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Seven yes, two no. <coughs> Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to confirm the reappointment of Jose Altieri to the Airport Commission for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to confirm the reappointment of Wendell Barthelmes to the Conservation Committee for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Pelequin? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to confirm the reappointment of Darlene Kuleza to the Southbridge Cultural Commission for a two-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2014. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 13, vote to confirm the reappointment of Kathleen Shields as animal inspector for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I, Councilor Langevin. Uh, I notice uh, animal inspector, not dog officer. Uh, it's different. Mm -hmm. it's different. That's, that's yeah. a separate right. part separate. of her. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. My question to the town manager is, what, animal in, what, do, what animals does she inspect? What kind of animals? I don't, I don't understand. I think like these are more um, like horses, and horses and cows and, and larger domesticated animals. Chickens. Chicken. And, and I guess chickens. Chickens too, huh? OK, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Clements. Thanks. <laughs> Right, I was thinking dog officer. We changed dog officer to three years, didn't we? Didn't we discuss the fact that it was one for a while and then we didn't yeah, just do animal three? control officer animal should have been three and animal inspector, I believe by state law, is only is one, one year. Okay, yeah. I'm just curious if this was something we should just, you know, go for the three too, but yeah, we can't. No, no, okay, no. thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Can we have a roll call, please? Councillor Pelequin? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Maikuchi? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? <coughs> yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to confirm the reappointment of Roger Narowski as veteran grave officer for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. 
Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 15, vote to confirm the reappointment of Daniel R. Charette to the Scholarship Commis Com Committee for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. I thought we did this. That was for the education, I think. Okay, thank you. It was a different, different committee. Ones. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Moriarty? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Palaquin? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 16 is Councillor's Forum. Councillor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, try to make this really brief because it is hot. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome both councillors, new councillors, Council Pelquin, Council Moriarty, and also uh, congratulations to Council Clemens for coming back, and I look forward to working with all of you. And uh, the other thing is we are in July, which is very hot. So you know what I'm going to say. We are not we having pool meetings. No. no. <laughs> I think it would be a great idea. But anyways, if we could, if the council so chooses to move our meeting down to the library for July, August, we're talking three more meetings basically, um, I think it would be beneficial to everyone, but I'll do obviously as council wishes. Um, and last but not least, I do, um, I, I missed the last meeting, I want to recognize uh, Councilor Spinelli and Councilor Living Good. Um, I look forward with, uh, we were working together for many years and it's, you know, we do sit up here, we, we all get a lot of grief. Um, it's rewarding and sometimes it's also discouraging. Um, but I, I have the utmost respect for anyone that runs and sits in this seat because that's their way of giving back to the community. So. I do thank you guys for your service, and I hope to see you in the future. And with that being said, I will move on. Thank you. Council, we will, um, the manager will look into that with the, um, the library and also with cable people, because that's yeah. quite an undertaking right. for them to move their, their show down that road. Okay. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not going to prolong this. Um, just everything yeah. Council Langevin said, really. Um, welcome to um, the two new councilors. And uh, Councilor Clements, congratulations for returning. And um, I love the heat, so maybe I don't agree with that. I don't care. We can be here. Um, <laughs> the hotter, the better. Um, and um, again, uh, Councilor Spinelli, former Councilor Spinelli and uh, Living Good. Um, it was a pleasure to serve with both of them. And I loved, I enjoyed uh, Councilor Spinelli's uh, animation, animated stories and it, he was so much fun. I love to listen to him, so. Um, like I said, I won't prolong this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. One quick note, I threw you to Mr. Clark. I don't know if it's possible or Councilor Nicola, at a future meeting, if we could have the hearing officer and the police officer that do our trash um, violations come before us and explain that process. I'm hearing so many different stories from residents uh, about the step process that I think it would be educational for us and the residents to hear exactly uh, what's happening. I did receive a letter, Mr. Clark. I will forward that to you this okay. evening. Um, it's just concerning because what I tell someone, they tell me it's not the answer that something different happened. So I'm just concerned about the consistency or the inconsistency of that process. So at some future meeting, Madam Chair, if that's possible, or subcommittee meeting, 
Yeah, my, my only hesitation with that, certainly the police officer is something that we can do. We have made a transition in the hearing officers, so we've gone from one to, to another, uh, to two actually, uh, as of July 1st. And I think actually tonight they're doing their first hearings, so they're fairly new to the process. But what I'll do is maybe I'll talk to the police chief and see if we can do some kind of presentation to a sub, at least maybe start at a subcommittee level and then move up from there. That's fine. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Pelliquin, get used to hearing that. <laughs> Councilor Pelliquin. <laughs> Um, I suppose eventually I'll, I will. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to uh, serve the community on the council. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, putting in my term of service here. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me with um, any concerns you might have, um, my number is 774-318-9665. Um, again, that's 774-318-9665. Um, my email address is amelia.pelequin at gmail.com, and I'm going to spell that because there's a lot of creative spellings of my name out there. It's A-M-E-L-I-A -E dot P-E-L-O-Q-U-I-N at G-M-A-I-L dot com. And you can also connect with me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Amelia Pelequin. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Vandal. Um, I have a couple of things this evening, and that is the, rail the railroad tracks down near the Golden Creek, super. Everybody, everybody likes it, but we still have two sets of railroad tracks in Southbridge. That need, they, they said they were going to remove them, so I don't want to let them. I don't want to let them forget it. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I want to just reiterate what you said to the parents, uh, the George Parent family, that my condolences and, you know, we can't say enough about how much of a gentleman he was, uh, so my condolences and respects to them. Uh, I want to congratulate Council Clements on re-election, Council Pelequin and Council Moriarty as well. Welcome to the Council. Look forward to working with you all. I want to also congratulate our Chairwoman and Vice Chairwoman for their uh, election to your positions. Um, also, uh, Fire Chief DeFranzo, just to give a little bit of history, not too long, but 1913 is when the town first had a full-time permanent fire chief, and since that time, almost 100 years, we've had seven. Chief DeFranzo is the seventh full-time permanent fire chief in the town of Southbridge. So that's a significant accomplishment for his career for the town. I also think it's important to note that uh, we had chiefs from surrounding communities who were here, and the Deputy State Fire Marshal Peter Strowski was here as well, so just to show that support. And that speaks well of him and the town of Southbridge. So congratulations to him and the family and the fire department on that. Uh, and other than that, that's all I have. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moriarty. Thank you. Uh, first off, uh, similar to what a lot of people have already stated, uh, congrats to all those uh, who have been elected and appointed uh, both uh, a couple weeks ago and tonight, uh, as well as uh, best of luck to uh, former councillors now, Spinelli and Livingood. Uh, and uh, certainly expect, I assume and expect that uh, both will somehow find their way involved with town business one way or another. Uh, they've got plenty of experience. Uh, one hope I have is both uh, council-wise as well as with uh, the residents that we can kind of just take a turn a new page uh, and move forward, which would be nice. Um, and then a couple of, of just thoughts or ideas, and I, I know uh, I, I spoke to the manager a while ago about this and uh, others as well. A uh, couple things that I thought might be useful, uh, they're not going to help cut down meeting time, but might be useful overall. Uh, one is, in addition to the, the discussion of, of having new businesses come in and, and kind of give their five minute uh, information, uh, I'd love to see us extend that to various civic groups, whether they're youth groups, Pop Warner, Little League, uh, Aspira, uh, or otherwise, Optimus Club, et cetera, just to kind of see what they do, help uh, broaden their audience, expose uh, some of the things that are, are going on in town that are very positive. Uh, also, along the same sort of along the same sort of line, I'd love to see uh, again for five to ten minutes at most uh, have various department heads. Uh, obviously, we have the the weekly reports that come in as to what's going on in each department, but I think it would uh, behoove both the council, but certainly the general public to know what exactly the town clerk's office does, what exactly uh, Nick Tortoise does, et cetera, et cetera. 
uh, just as a good way to explain that. And I, I would think uh, by them coming up, it also helps in terms of accountability when it comes to budget time as to what exactly they do, where they can uh, be more efficient, things like that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, especially on those sort of lines, uh, I'd love to see, and again, I know it's not something people always love to see, but uh, personally I would, uh, seeing, even if it's every six months or so, just a, a, a meeting with the school committee, a joint session, uh, I think that would be very helpful, especially when it comes to the budget process there. It's a huge, huge portion of this town's budget. Um, and, and unfortunately, quite often, it's, it's the kids that, uh, that kind of get the easy cuts in a way. Um, so I just would love to see that kind of done as well. Before you, you're, I just want to um, address that last piece. It is true, and, and in the past we did have joint council and school committee meetings. Every year we do do that once, and that's during budget time right. in the EHS subcommittee when, that, when the school budget is presented that most of the school committee members do attend, but it's not something that unless you make your way to the town hall you're going to see because it's not televised. But right. that's a wonderful reminder that we should continue with right. that. Even, even with the fall, uh, obviously we don't have town meeting format here, but oftentimes in the fall is when the budget kind of gets readjusted mm -hmm. based on late numbers and things like that. I think that'd be a great time to kind of catch them halfway, see how the school year is starting, especially this year with the new school building coming online. Uh, and just a, a good way to keep the lines of communication open, especially if it's televised, just so that the general public sees this cooperation and that it's not the us versus them that it was of the prop two and a half several years ago and such. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's one of, uh, one of the things that as a, as a part of this council, I'm very proud of the fact that the council and the school committee have seen, seen their way back to working together for the community. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would also like to thank the people who uh, came out to the election. It's very important in this process to get out there and vote. And I thank you for showing your support and choosing me to come back for another three years. I'm looking forward to many of the things that need to, to get done here in town and being part of that. Um, we've got some good works that we've been working on in the last few years. And I look forward to hopefully bringing a number of, of those endeavors to uh, fruition. I also want to thank my new counselors that we'll be serving with and, and those that I've been serving with. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to the future with you. Um, I would, uh, as an order of business, I would like to mention with the Cops and Kids uh, bus schedule that you've been hearing about. Some of you may not have internet, uh, may not have access to, to getting it that way, but you can also pick up a hard copy at the police station. They keep them by the front desk. So if you're a parent or child out there who's interested in that particular, in the bus route, you can pick up a hard copy at the police station. And I believe they may be putting it on the cable yes. access too. That was, uh, mm -hmm. Sergeant Dingy was mentioning that. So um, we've encouraged him. Um, I would also like to thank the, uh, our past counselors, Living Good and, and Spinelli, and uh, mention that I will miss uh, Counselor Living Good's Christmas story. Uh, perhaps he'll come back and share that with us. Uh, and, uh, and of course, Counselor Spinelli, I, he's not off the hook yet. So he's, he's still around here. We know where to find you. Um, and that's pretty much about it for this evening. Thank you, Keep Council. Going. There you go. <laughs> well, um, next, yes. Did you have something to add? Do you want to just put that in and then we'll try to make that? Okay. Do so you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe get the cable. Agenda item number 17 is the discussion of the next meeting date. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Councilor Nicola, Chairman Nicola. Um, we're going to have a nice little break for a couple of weeks, and the next meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 30th, 2012, 7 p.m., and we will uh, post that as being in the Piapi room at the library. Barring any changes, um, that's what we will do. So uh, I'd just like to add to that, Councilor, if I might, that if you do plan on attending those meetings at the library, come in through the side parking lot. You would be coming in. Um, the children's room. At the children, in the children's room at the bottom level, the front door will be locked. Um, so if you do attend, intend to attend those meetings, that's how you will get in to come into the uh, library. Okay, agenda item number 18 is adjournment. So Second. All in favor? Good night, everybody. Stay cool.